Hi parents, I'm Danielle Moore with Teaching One More, and today I want to talk to you about the setup for the standard algorithm. I'm sure many of you are familiar with this format from school, and in the last few years since the Common Core Standards have started, we've learned more about math and how it works and how best to teach it to students. And because of those changes, we want to hold off introducing students to the standard algorithm for as long as possible, especially for grades kinder, first, second, and even third. And I'm going to give you five reasons why we want to do that. So here's one of those reasons. If students were to look at this number, traditionally, if we ask them how many ones are in 132, they would say that there are two ones. If we ask them how many tens, they would say that there are three tens. And if we ask them how many hundreds they are, they would say one. Well, actually, in the number 132, there's actually 13 tens. And in the number 132, there's actually 132 ones. And that's important. The reason that this is important is because it teaches students to look at the whole number and understand the value of those digits and what they really mean. Now, in this number, there is one whole hundred, right? Um, and we need a few more to get to two hundreds. But what we want kids to know is that there are not three tens in this number. There is a three in the tens place, but there's actually 13 tens and 132 ones. And that's one of the reasons why we want to hold off on showing kids how to use a standard algorithm. Another thing we want to be mindful of is carrying the one. So for example, if we were to add uh, 132 to 259, students would typically add these numbers up and they would end up with 11. And they've been told over and over, you can't have two digits in the ones place, so you have to carry the one. Problem is, is that's not a one, that's a 10. If two and nine equals 11, that means that this one here represents a 10, and this one here represents a group of one. So when we ask them to carry a one, we're really asking them to carry a 10 but it's invisible. So although they might say, oh no, it's a 10, they don't actually get a lot of practice dealing with those groups of 10, which are fundamental in working with our number system because we're based on a base 10 number system. It's usually pretty invisible um, because kids learn all of these procedures that make it quick and efficient and hide a lot of the math. We don't wanna hide the math, we wanna bring it forward. So that's reason number two. We want to avoid introducing the standard algorithm too early, specifically in kinder, first, second, and third. Another thing you'll notice is if I change this number here to a 9, and if I change these numbers all to 9s, based on the way the standard algorithm works, when students use this method, the highest they ever have to count to is 18, right? So in this example, they would make this 18, they would carry the 10 over, and now they would add these up. But usually it looks something like this. So one plus nine is 10, and then 10 plus nine is 19. And they would say carry the one, but that's actually a group of 100. And then again, they would add the 1 to the 9 to get 10, and then 10 to the 9 to get 19. And again, they're not carrying 100, they're carrying 1,000. But when we use this procedure and setup, kids don't get to realize that they're making groups of 10, they're making groups of 100, they're making groups of 1,000. And this has far-reaching consequences that don't always show up right away. So although kids can get an answer quickly, they're not really learning and engaging with the base 10 number system in a way that's gonna help them in the long term. Another thing that happens with this setup, 
and I'll change some of these numbers back, is that when students, again, are looking at these numbers, they're isolating them. into small compartments. So when students look at this number, they isolate them into the ones place, they isolate them into the tens place, and they isolate them into the hundreds place. And what they don't often do is look at the whole number. So when we take this framework away, students are left to deal with this number and what it represents. So this whole number is 979, and then this number is 23. So asking kids to estimate, about how many do you think it would be? They can stand back and think, oh, well, 979 is fairly close to 1,000. And then if we were to add 20 more, or almost 20 more, we'd be at about 1,000, a little bit over. So one of the things it does is when we take this structure away, kids get to estimate and round in an authentic way. So we want to make sure that kids are using these types of procedures in ways that make sense to them. And it's much better for all students if we hold off teaching these strategies until they're in fourth grade when they're formally introduced in the state standards. Um, one more thing I wanna show you about this is that research shows that once students are introduced to this procedure, it is very difficult to get them to try other procedures or other ways of solving this problem. I've experienced this myself quite a few times. But what happens is students start to use this strategy or this procedure on automatic without thinking about the numbers before they do so. So I see students do a lot of stuff like this. So in this case, we have 100 minus 98. So if they've been in the uh, practice of using numbers in friendly ways and staying away from this, they can look at these numbers and say, oh, it's only two away. The answer is two. But if they're on automatic and they've been trained to use this procedure all the time, they're going to do something like this. Cross off the one, make it a zero, make that a 10, follow it back, bring it over here, click on the next door. That's a lot of steps for a very simple problem, and it leaves a lot of room for error. Whereas if they're taught to look at the whole number and move away from the standard algorithm, they can often solve problems more easily and more efficiently. So parents, if your child is in K first, second, or third grade, we want to try and stay away from the standard algorithm. They'll get introduced to it later. A lot of times people think that they're giving kids an advantage by teaching them how to use a standard algorithm when in actuality we're holding them back in a lot of ways. Um, and if you think about it, when we think about those algebra equations that are written in a long straight line, it's very different from the way the standard algorithm is set up. And so what this tends to do is this procedure and this devotion to it um, and this sort of automaticity to using this as opposed to thinking flexibly can actually be a roadblock to students doing well in algebra. So hold off, they'll get there. In the meantime, I've got a series of videos that can show you how to help kids be efficient, effective, and independent problem solvers using strategies other than the standard algorithm. This is Danielle Moore with Teaching One More, and I'm glad that you tuned in today.